podcast, Truth Seekers podcast. Buckle up, everyone. We're going to talk aliens, UFOs, ghosts, spiritual and paranormal from all of the three moons. On your wildest dreams. Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Man, I'm excited and delighted to be with you guys. Uh, had a awesome, jam-packed past like four days or so. Had a lot of fun. We did our men's retreat this past Thursday. Um, had a lot of fun this weekend. We did, celebrated uh, Memorial Day yesterday. And uh, just spending time out with family and friends and stuff like that. So it's been amazing. So looking forward to catching up with everyone. Shout out to everybody in the chat already here to hang out. If anybody has any questions or comments, I definitely keep one eye on the chat. So if y'all want to ask any questions or chime in, make sure y'all uh, send them over in the chat. Everybody listening on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, um, Twitch, all the other places, DLive, those, those places. Shout out to you guys. And um, got an awesome show planned for you. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has um, got a copy of the book, Spirit Realm. It is here. It's still doing well. Thank you guys for the support with that. If you haven't had a chance to check out my book, go to um, truthseeker.com and you can get a copy there, Amazon, Walmart.com, wherever you can find a copy available. Just go to truthseeker.com and check it out. Also, huge thank you to everybody who is uh, supporting my work and supporting this show my music, everything that I bring to the table with my ministry uh, via Patreon. So all the partners that we have out there across the world, man. Thank you guys for believing in the work and uh, and showing up, man. You guys are co-creators. I really do believe that you share in the harvest and you make this possible. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Um, some of the latest patrons within the last week or so, shout out to Lynn Hall. Thank you, my friend. Uh, the Feathered Serpent, shout out to you. And Lynn Graves, thank you guys for believing in the work. Uh, if you want to support, go to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of music, which is 200 plus songs. You get access to our Thursday night school of the mystics, which is like the community aspect to what we're building here. And you get access to uh, some exclusive behind the scenes stuff, my meditations, a bunch of really cool stuff. Check it out. Patreon.com backslash truth seeker. I also want to uh, publicly thank. Uh, this patron here, uh, Jeffrey and Jamie Moody, for believing in the work. And some of my patrons here on the uh, uh, podcast with me today, man, publicly. I want to thank you guys for believing in the work and, and the support, man. Thank you guys and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having us today. And we definitely support what you do and what you're all about. And uh, Jamie's here with me today, too. So we win the day. 
just acknowledge you and your work and thank you for this time of being with you. Man, just just the, the uh, few, I would say, months, weeks that I've known you, man, uh, you guys have just been, you know, near and dear to my heart. And kindred spirits is a, is a word that uh, we love to use, right? That's a good word when you find somebody who, like, man, this person gets me. This person resonates with me. This person understands. Even though we have differences, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? That there's something that's that we're connected deeper uh, that transcends any religious dogma doctrines or or beliefs that that change that evolve and i think that that's a uh um you know that's my story and and it's y'all's story as well so i want to get into a little bit of that today that's right and i was going to tell you real quick i did uh i did have a chance to fully read your book and um i think it's very solid and informative and i think it's a great read for for the full spectrum all the way from the non-believer to the believer those seeking searching asking questions want to know more is, is a great read so thank you thank you out there yep. did you show some stuff to jamie too in it that st stood out <laughs> yeah yeah well as i read i said jamie listen to this come on really <laughs> yeah. uh yeah we talked about it everything he reads aloud to me a lot there you go so you got the meat of it anything that was good you got <laughs> Cool, cool. Well, it's always good when you uh, when you got the, when you share the same platform, the same beliefs, um, it, some of the same experiences. It, it means a lot, you know. When we can do this journey together, and also to to read about where you've been, and say, yeah, Jamie, you remember those days, uh, you know, all that. So it's it's just real good, real good. Yeah, so um, I like doing this, and I hope this doesn't sound creepy, but I go to Facebook pages, especially with people who are conscious, people who like have grown out dreadlocks, and they're just like in the culture, whether they're festival-going people or emo or gothic people. You can go to their Facebook page, and if you click backward on their profile pictures, a lot of times if they've been on social media for a while, it'll show you their transformation. So you can see pictures of them seven years ago, six years ago, where they were, what they looked like. And so you start seeing people grow out their dreads and start tattooing their whole body. You know, you just see the transformation. And so I have gone to your page, got to meet you. And then so I go back on some of your pictures and I'm scrolling through, getting to kind of snoop on you guys. And it's been a transformation uh, spiritually, for sure. Physically, for sure, as well, too. You look a lot different than you did uh, I don't know how many years ago it was, but there's been a, a, a spiritual and a physical transformation. And uh, maybe that has something to do with the health coaching side of your ministry that you bring to the table. What What's happened um, with you becoming conscious in it, not only being an internal, but a very external experience as well? Yeah, and I'll let Jamie uh, uh, expound on that to start off with. I want to say for us, health coaching and life coaching, that's only a product of what actually happened internally. So um, let Jamie reflect real quick because there has been a, 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 an experience, there has been a transformation and Jamie's walked through it side by side, never left me, always with me, uh, being married over 20 years. You, you just know, you can imagine the journey, right? So um, with that, I ask Jamie to speak a little bit about that. All right, so we we were married for approximately nine or ten years and I was saved I knew Jesus and uh, I wasn't living great um, I wasn't living for him I was still living for myself let's put it that way thought the whole time that my husband was saved because uh, he was a good person you know he was a good old country boy and um, so ten years in uh, we were kind he was kind of emotionally rocky and I didn't know what was going on. And he was basically fighting for his soul. And he came to me one day and said, I'm, I, I just received Jesus. And it kind of floored me because I thought he already did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is where it kind of started from there. Uh, obviously, he was uh, a new creation. And it, he was the example of being a totally new creature in Christ because um, he was one way, and when he got born again, he was completely different. He saw things differently. He was a different husband. He was a different father. Uh, he, he, from before, he was uh, stingy and didn't want to give, and immediately after, he's ready to just give everything. And 
uh, you know, so he, that's where the, the transformation began. Uh, as he progressed spiritually, he started realizing, you know, um, this is my temple and, and I haven't been taking care of it physically, uh, mentally or spiritually this whole time. And, and so the three part being kind of came into one for him then, and it transformed our whole entire life. Uh, from the way we did life, what we said, what we did, what we ate, uh, everything, you know. So um, I'll let you pick it up from there. <laughs> let, let, let me, let me, well, let me ask you, what, what's, the, what's the difference there as far as this changing of be, getting saved or whatever? So, like, there's a bunch of people who claim to be saved and nothing really changes. Like, what... Like when it really takes root of what a real transformation is and this quote unquote saved stuff, what, what like what happened inwardly with you? What what was like what got saved? You know what I'm saying? And, and let me let me just let me speak on that just for a moment. We down here in the Bible Belt, you're raised with a certain vernacular or a certain technology, a way of saying certain things to describe. So uh, down here we say being saved. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes you will hear born again, yeah. uh, born from above, um, spiritually awakened, um, or my conscious awakening. Walking, walking with the Lord. So the boy is walking with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. So when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ, um, and that's not, and, and when I say that, um, that's what happened to me a little over 10 years ago. Already married 10 years, two children. I had every external security that you can name, you know, from retirement. I worked a government job. Jamie was in the public school system teaching. We had health insurance. I had the gold, the silver, the guns, the lands, the boats, you name it. Whatever I thought I needed to secure me, I had it. But I didn't have any security. I didn't have peace. And that's the emotional turmoil that Jamie was referring to right before I got saved, right before I surrendered, uh, right before my, I was awakened spiritually to the reality, to the, to the, to the realness of Jesus Christ. So, um, and when experiencing Christ, automatically the peace comes. Um, and again, I was in an emotional troubled state because I didn't have peace. Even though I had all everything that the world could offer, I had two children, I just knew I wasn't good enough. I knew I wasn't prepared enough. There was just a inner working in me that says, I'm not enough. I know I can't be the husband, be the father, be the boss, be this, be that. Um, I just, I felt very inadequate. And, and it, it really put a lot of pressure on me. And I just remember July 12th, 2009, um, it, it was a morning. And I was like, God, whatever you are, God, whatever this is, God. And I, I, I had no concept of what God was back then other than something bigger than me. Because for once in my life, I was bigger than me. I, I always supplied. I always made this happen. It was me, 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 that ego. Very, very ego dominated back then. And I had to literally surrender my, my will, myself, to even pray to something higher, but to actually believe he would come to pass or something would happen. Uh, that's the day that it changed my life. I said, God, whatever this Jesus is, and I grew up in the Bible Belt. We, we talked a little bit about that. I, I heard enough about Jesus. Never did. I always knew him. But that day I started to believe in him. And that was the day that the shift came. Many people know Jesus. Many, many. I, I have many um, from Hindu, Buddhist. I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of family that know Jesus. And those that would say that they're born again, uh, they are saved, you know, the way we call it spiritually awakened, it was the day that they actually started to believe in him and the things he really had to say. So that, that to me, that was uh, the shift. That was the awakening. That was the uh, regeneration of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit actually came inside of me. He did a work in my spirit. My spirit was spiritually dead, 
my mind was very dead, dull, just, you know, I could only think as high as me the, on a humanistic level. But that day when I got born again, the spirit realm opened up to me, filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know all the signs that followed those that believe. Right off the bat, um, man, I was like 100% G-O-D. You know, I was, it was J-C all the way. And yeah. I mean, I was going to church. Even though I went to church before, it was under obligation for my mama's sake. You know, I was a good old boy, like she said. But I was only going through the motions, man. I didn't want to be there. I'd rather be at home. I'd rather be hunting. I'd rather be fishing. I'd rather be doing anything else than listening to some hypocrite at the time that didn't know what he's talking about. And I end up usually feeling worse going to a place like that than better. So, of course, uh, whenever I had this encounter with, with Jesus, I was like, man, let me go to church. Let me, let me do something. These people believe in Jesus, too. Let me... And that take, took me on a journey, me and Jamie, from the yeah. from depths of religion. Uh, I say the depths of religion, you know, the primitive Baptist is where I come out of. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm guessing Jamie already being saved and then you getting born again, like um, getting in the scriptures more, praying more, like, you know, that yeah, was kind of yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, I had to re-, re um, vitalize your faith right and take you deeper because you're spending more time in the word together you're really believing god is real and ever present in your life and wants to hang out with you and wants to communicate with you and so i guess naturally you guys just kind of started to go deeper into your faith walk when this happened right both of you guys together yeah absolutely yeah and that was so precious because you know the woman she sanctified the household so thank god for her being already in christ Cause when we got married, I wasn't in Christ and she was, but she just thought I was, we yeah. never really had a real conversation or, um, that just wasn't even on the table. <laughs> That's how far asleep I was. Yeah. But now it's like everyday life. It's like, it's all about Jesus. You know, what, what's Jesus say on this? And you know, what's the word yeah. say? And so everything, but yeah. Um, that, that was a, a, a great awakening experience. That, I'm, that I'm, really a, I'm assuming that, um, like a lot of people, um, anything that you do, you do above and beyond. You, if you got a job to do, you're going to make sure it gets done, and you're going you're gonna to go right. above and beyond and make sure that that job is finished and everybody's happy. Uh, maybe it, maybe there's some people pleasing in it, maybe some somewhere that you got to deal with, but you just go above and beyond. And so there's a lot of people. Where anything that they do, when they're doing drugs, listen, they're going to do drugs above and beyond, better than anybody they know. When they, you know, are working, when they, whatever they got going on, when it comes to their faith, religion, they're going to go above and beyond. I'm not going, I'm going to commit to it, and this is my life, and so I'm going to go above and beyond with it. So with that, you know, a lot of people, you get called a zealot. I mean, you're you're happy. You're changed. You're like, this is new to you. You burn a lot of bridges, I feel like, like early on, right? Because there's no, like, it's all new. Nobody's really teaching us how this thing is supposed to look and how we, you know, maintain a job and how we maintain, re how do we talk to regular people, you know, because we just want to tell everybody about Jesus and this beautiful work that's happened to our lives and stuff like that. And so people say that, you know, I don't know if they, they might call you a zealot or just say that you just become religious or whatever. And you're just happy. You're happy to be alive. You're happy to really be living for the first time. But in the, in the wake of that, we, we do burn a lot of bridges early on and people, I got to stay away from him. He's, he's going, he takes it too far. Those kind of things. Did you experience that because you just really believe God at his word and thought that it was real for you? Like what happened with like relationships around you as you just begin to, to dive into this thing? Yeah, I would definitely say I was very zealous without wisdom. Yeah. And, uh, and um, Jamie is telling me she has a a uh, a, a story to tell. That so he used to work at the the DOT, uh, and you know he he knew a lot of people. After he left his career to go into full time ministry, we later heard that someone that he worked with said, "Did you hear about Jeffrey? He's gone off the deep end." And this was like, you know, a person we've seen at church and, you know, we consider them to be a, a Christian. And uh, so to hear someone like that say that we went off the deep end or he went off the deep end, 
basically saying the same thing you said, taking it a little too seriously or a little too far. But, and, and, and you know, I would say is on their end, not having eyes to see, ears to hear, but also on my end, probably being a little too zealous and not taking that in consideration because I'm new in the Lord. I'm, I'm very zealous. I'm on fire. I'm like telling everybody. I'm talking about mystical things now. I'm talking about just the word on yeah. an infant level, on an infant level. Hey, John so loved the world that he gave us you know, the <laughs> deep. scripture. Deep. And, and you're like, whoa, you deep, man. That's yeah. right. Now I'm just quoting the word. But here, let me tell you about it. Yeah. That's where they're like, man, you, you talk about the, you, you, talk, you do this a little too much. You're a little too passionate, you know, or whatever. I cross her fence and it makes them uncomfortable. And yeah. that's happened yeah. in my immediate family. Um, it happened in my adopted family. It happened in, with my coworkers, my, my want, you know, I think I have one friend before JC and me and him don't even do life together no more. You, and when I say a friend, like a bro, the closest oh. thing you can have to the bro without under, knowing who Jesus Christ is as a bro. So he's still a lifelong friend, uh, but we don't, we don't roll no more like yeah. we used to. Even though he's, he, you know, was walking with me on my journey at one time. Um, we just keep on journeying. Now so, in, in, in that process, right. Of just kind of, you know, coming out gung ho and just believing God at his word. It ain't, you know, in, I know in, in your mind and in my mind, there's nothing like above and beyond. It's just like, Hey, this is real. It's for me today. And God wants to send me out into the world. He still loves people. He still heals. He still walks on water. He's still able to provide and show up in my life. And so it becomes this, you know, in, inclusive song and dance with the creator who wants to speak to you and through you. And so believe in that, and uh, obviously not everyone believes it. So then there's this, you know, dealing with religious people or people who are comfortable in your faith. God has a way of making us uncomfortable, stepping out of the boat, you know, and, 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 and making sure that we walk by faith. You guys believe in God at his word, wanting to see that stuff, right? Like you want to see people healed. You want to see people set free. You want to see people experience life, be, you know, because you thought you were living, you know, and then you really came into this encounter with life itself, Jesus Christ and, and connecting with, with the father. Um, you guys jumped into ministry and ended up leaving the country to go, go to another country and start ministry and, and stuff like that. What, what, what was that experience like? Yeah, that was, um, and, and I described that as what, what we call the more abundant life that, which he came to give us. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, once your, once your life is more abundant in every area, and it, it don't hit all at one time. You know, our 20-year marriage and 10-year journey with the Lord, that abundant life has been a process. It's, we've learned this on our journey. And when we moved out of the country, uh, we lived in the Dominican Republic for a couple of years. That was where we were on our journey at that moment. And I believe we're all on the spiritual journey of some kind. And we're just at different places on that journey. And it's super awesome when you get to cross paths. For a moment, you know, um, when we moved to the Dominican, that really was a, that was about five years after knowing the Lord. And we just, it just got to the place where with Jamie, and that was a process. We, we made a trip or two over there and uh, we had children to consider, had a lot to consider. But when we moved over there, there was no plan B. There was no coming back. It was like, you know, full commitment because I, number one, I had no clue. We, not that we were going into it blindly, but we didn't put it in a box. We didn't try to figure it out. And we were just, you could have called it walking on water at that time. You know, that's how much faith we had that, hey, the word says this. We're just going to put him at his word. We actually put it to the test. And uh, we gave away everything, yeah. sold everything and went with. 17 suitcases <laughs> as our life. <laughs> yeah, we have five children, and we we all got uh, three, children. three children. I mean, five of, five of us, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so yeah, it was quite an experience. But that that at that time, Derek, um, that really accelerated um, our growth in the Lord because during that time we saw God provide. 
we had a good time. It was joyful. And where we first anticipated never coming back, we were back uh, just within two years uh, and actually made a trip or two back and um, during that time. But that was definitely uh, one of the mile markers that yeah. started to cause the, the split from our old relationships. We started birthing new relationships. And uh, it's just been, a, been an awesome journey up at this point. Now, where where were you guys when you was was to step out and take a, a a move like that to make a move? Like, where were you concerning like what ministry is supposed to look like, right? And uh, and I, I'm I'm still trying to fill you out to see where you are because we know that like it's supernatural and God is wanting to do all of these walk on waters, heal people, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, early on, you're still like, man, we're gonna we're going to go hang out with dead people and raise the dead. Was that your mind? Like going into ministry over there, we're going to go, we were going to go find a, a village of lepers over here and cleanse them all. Was it like that grandiose and far out or was it more practical? We're just going to go love on people. Like as far as your faith level, cause like, for, uh, you know, being a baby Christian and just believing that it's all real. We're looking, we're looking to go to funerals and start praying for dead people. Like that's just what we were doing. And then it takes a while till we go to funerals and, pray for dead people and nothing happens. And then we're like, man, what is, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So there's this weird, like just gung ho. Uh, was you guys still gung ho? Are you still gung ho? Because I know you really do still believe in the supernatural. I do too. But like, where were you with this type of ministry? Was that practical or was it more just be like longing for the supernatural to take place in your lives? Or was it a mixture? Definitely a mixture. Yeah. Definitely a mixture. Um, you know, our faith level and intensity back then is as today. Um, waking the dead, walking on wood, you name it, gemstones, whatever it is. That's where our faith is. Um, today, we, we tend to walk in more wisdom, like the practical side of it. Back then, just the mere thought of, yeah. you know, things that were available in the spirit, that was enough to excite you, as it should be. Yeah. And still is today. Um, but there's a practical side to it. You know, I, I tell people this, you know, as often as I talk to them, what good is it to uh, be able to believe to raise the dead and heal the sick and do all that, but you can't believe God just to pay your rent yeah, or just to provide you a car or whatever the big thing is at the moment. So that's one thing we came to grips with ourselves. If God, if I can't believe you, to supply my own needs, how am I going to help supply the needs of others? And without knowing what we were doing, we put ourselves in a position to basically have to have faith and really, really trust God for everything. Uh, when we got over there, we had a couple that we had uh, formed a relationship with that helped us tremendously. Uh, but we were basically just relying on God for everything. And I think that was the biggest part of the reason why we went there. Uh, because we were in that faith. We were building our yeah, faith yeah. then. We were yeah. living by faith. And we thought we were living by faith until we got to the Dominican. But, but mainly to, 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 to really answer that, um, we, we took God out the box, but we put ourselves into one. And man, that was pressure. And um, that's that's... It's like it pushed us through. We had to help ourselves push ourselves through. Yeah. Simply because we live in the West. We live in a country where there's a substitute for God on from health care to, to everything. This is a very instant, uh, blessed nation we live in. So we don't know how to suffer. We don't know. Um, we're very comfortable here. So when I started to learn by faith, I had to, you know, learn to believe God. It's totally different than what it was before I woke up. Yeah. You know, God wasn't in my, as much as I wanted to think we were good people or respectable or whatever. No, I was not living for God. God was not living for, I, it was non-existent. I was asleep. So whenever, you know, becoming awake and becoming aware to the, reality of jesus christ it's a total as above so below it's a swap it's a polarity shift it's where i used to think wrong all the time now i'm thinking right all the time because mm -hmm. i have the mind of christ and my thoughts is stayed on him so it changes the whole thing so that experience um 
even though the people was like, oh, you know, he's taking it too far. He's a little kooky. I think we have one that says maybe even a little occultish, uh, as if they knew what that even was. <laughs> um, it, it really, it really speaks volumes in the transformation, the physical transformation. Jamie's always, she looks like the day I married her, even on a photograph. She, she always maintained a, a holy sanctified image. I went from spiritually dead to spiritually awakened. And I went from being physically dead to now physically awakened. And it was only because of that spiritual awakening. So the spirit woke up my physical body that says, Hey, I'm dying here. I was very inflamed. Um, I, I, I was, I was, almost a hundred pounds heavier yeah uh eating everything whatever whenever all the time no restraint no i guess trying to get that security right whatever and once i got that living water in me once i got that bread never thirst never hunger then the body i was able to have control over the flesh it was amazing and just in my restraint of no i don't have to eat that way no more i don't have to be like this And he does sustain me. So I found him to be nourishment, found him to be energy. I found him to be everything that the physical body should ever need. And um, I just give thanks to Kirby De Lenero and Fiona because they really, the transformative grace that they present, and we consider them pastors over our life, they really live that lifestyle. They prove it. And it's all in the face of Jesus Christ. I think Kirby did an interview with you uh, yeah, I really love him, man. I really, yeah, I'm I'm new to a lot of his stuff, but uh, I had a great time talking to him. And you know, for for somebody to be so, <clears throat> I think he's known for his uh, being eccentric and far out and some of these uh, amazing ideas. But to hear them break down reconciliation and the cross and uh, justification by grace through faith, and like to hear them explain that, you know that that's where the power comes from. Like this security of a firm foundation of what it means to be born again. You know what I'm saying? So I really uh, appreciate that in him. And I appreciate that in any uh, minister that I'm that I'm going to look up to or uh, f- feel blessed to call a brother is that they get it. Like everything is built on top of that. And I think that for you guys, that's y'all's foundation as well. You never graduated from Christ. Even though you guys have been so many places in the spirit, you're still growing and we're still just getting started, even with your story, at, even on this podcast, like uh, you, the foundation is still there and it's there for others. Like this is the source of all freedom. This is the source of all spiritual power, of all supernatural experiences from all of this stuff. And that's one one thing I commend because we know that that's what the enemy wants to take away from you. That testimony, that, uh, you know what I'm saying, foundation of grace that you think that it was, it's the way that you think, it's the way that you believe. And obviously all of that stuff comes into the table, but it's never, it's not the foundation. You know, it's Jesus Christ and him crucified, which is the foundation for all of that stuff. And that's that's so beautiful. Um, talking about like stepping out on on faith and believing God and like uh, believing for the miracles and the signs and wonders and all that kind of stuff, man. I remember, uh, I don't know if you heard this story, but um, we were definitely there. I, I, I believe I can walk on water and raise the dead. Let me find a dead person. Let me find a sick person. I mean, we would stop and like lay hands and pray on people who were broke down. We would pray for their car. And there have been times where we've seen like a, a broke down car just turn on or broken machinery and washing machines. And we just we just believe, bro. Like in and, and our and our faith made it possible. And so I remember um, even though that's way far out there, like it again, what you said, having a zeal without all the knowledge, you know, because uh, there was a, a friend of mine. We were getting ready to head to church. And this was back in 2000, right after we got born again and uh, 2000, 2001. And uh, he jumped on the back of our car and I like floored it and spun out and it and I flung him off the car on accident. And um, it like threw his shoulder out of socket and he was all scraped up. I mean, we were headed to church and we, we were madly in love with Jesus. We loved worship. We were addicted to it. Still are. But like it was like, let's just get him to church, get him in the glory and we'll pray for him and everything's OK. And so we go to church and we're just up there worshiping like nothing's going on. The guy's shoulders knocked out of socket. 
And uh, some one of the ladies came up to me and said, Derek, I think y'all need to take him to the hospital, man. He's He needs to go see a doctor. Just pray for him, man. He'll be okay. Just pray for him. You know, and they pray for him and nothing happens. But someone's like, I'm going to take him to it. And I think I let somebody else take him to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? Why well, I stayed in the glory and worshiping. You know what I'm saying? With It's like there's a disconnect there of where it's so far in the spirit realm that you're like, no, you're like not any earthly good because you're so spiritually minded. Like the right thing to do, wisdom would have been to take him to get him checked out. But faith would say, no, let's take him to the glory and let the glory of the Lord snap his shoulder back in place. You know what? Did you guys have any? I'm sure you did. That's a learning process, you know, the learning curbs we got of just like doing impractical stuff just because we believe God. But who knows? Like faith would say, yeah, you did the right thing. True seeker. You believe God. It didn't happen. You take him to the. Go ahead. I just got a classic one here. <laughs> right. You're sharing that story. That's awesome. Because, yeah, we we this is early day stuff here. This mm-hmm. is like yeah. early before on. I knew where John 316 was in the Bible. I'm just we got into Jeffrey just he would read the scripture and, and take it so literal that he's like, okay, this we're gonna just do this from now on. And so this, you know, this faith thing, just having this, this faith, we put it to the test, I guess you could say, on everything. Yeah. Not not in a is this real or not, yeah. but we were like, we're like okay, we're proving well, this it. is it, we're gonna do it. So yeah. so we did it with everything and um our second child was born um, allergic to, highly, highly, highly allergic to eggs and peanuts. And so, you know, we did everything to keep him away from all of that because he would have a major allergic reaction. And that was before JC for me. Yeah, we had the happy pen, everything. Yeah, I was ready with the pen, bro. After JC. Make sure the note goes to the school, do not feed peanut butter. I was very fearful for my son's life Yeah. before JC. So with this faith, he's like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna pray. We're gonna lay hands on him and and just believe and pray that he's healed of that allergy. And we pray. We laid hands on him. He's like, all right, get this boy a spoonful of peanut butter. <laughs> now he can before this, he could not even be around peanut butter. Like even the smell of it, he he would start itching his face. He still don't like the smell today, but he can eat. <laughs> yeah. right. So we gave him a spoonful of peanut butter. And uh, he ate that peanut butter and did not have a single reaction. We boiled eggs. We gave him scrambled eggs. We did eggs up all kinds of different ways. And and, uh, and he's never, and he still eats eggs to this day, like every day. Uh, and, and, and again, it could have, a lot of people were thinking like, oh, that's like really extreme. Like, that's crazy. You're going to stick a spoonful of peanut butter in your son's mouth when he, you know, could Very die dangerous. from that. Uh, and, and, and praise God that that he sustained us through that as far as like showing that it's real. Praise you know, God that my heal. zeal without wisdom didn't kill that boy. Right. Because <laughs> yeah. not only was maybe at the time I was believing for him to be healed because by stripes we're healed and I'm basing all my faith off that. Well, if he did have a severe allergic reaction and he did die, was my faith developed then? in raising the dead too. So, you know, thank God, his grace just really protects us. Uh, he watches over us uh, every moment of the journey. Um, but yeah, and we still believe that way today, that, that the blood of Jesus breaks off these curses. Uh, you know, something that God put in the earth, such as a peanut, should not make me sick. It should not kill me or put me in a position. Because if everything he created is good and very good, well, I, you know, this kind of comes to a conversation me and you had over the weekend, Thursday, Wednesday yeah. night about THC and marijuana and how okay. I have a allergic reaction to it now, you know, and you and I, I know where your mind went. You're like, do you want to be healed from that reaction? <laughs> you know, because God made it and it's good and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was like. No, just because like the pain and going through that is like, man, I'd rather die than have to go through that. Like just in case, maybe that's that doubt that creeps in and I'll never get to do it. But I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with it. But I see like believing God for the impossible. and But it's testimonies 
obviously the Bible is a freaking huge, it's the testimony of Jesus Christ, you know? So reading those stories in the Bible and then hearing ministers and you mentioned, um, what's his name? Uh, Andrew Womack is a, was a huge influence for you. You went to, uh, you got certified or, or went through to the school or something like that through Andrew Womack, who has stories about he don't he have a story about going to his son's funeral. Like they were at the funeral home or something or something crazy and laid hands on his kid and raised his own kid from the dead. Like crazy. Yeah, you hear these stories and it just like you want a, a faith like that. You want to be able to do that. You read it in the Bible. Now you hear about people actually doing it, you know, on the earth. So what what would stories like that do for your faith? and still do it it propelled us a lot because we we also have another story um i don't know if you guys want me to share about our supernatural childbirth with our daughter and not only was it a testament for other people my doctor included but it, it did it, it did propel us and you know not that you didn't have assurance because you can go into it believing um but it just it it would propel us and make you think, okay, I can go higher and higher with this and yeah, leave for bigger and bigger. Just no limit, no yeah. limit in the spirit because uh, if you can do it, I can do it. And Jesus said that basically. He said, greater works will you do. So, now with, with, that, with that, did you ever plateau out? Did you ever like believe so much and then maybe stuff wasn't happening and then like, hold on, we need to because there, there there has to be a transition right of where the practical yeah. stuff comes in like where did yeah. the practical side come in for me I, I think i plateaued out of like wanting benny hen to pray for me to receive the anointing and then having people who go through the jungles of india and command snakes to bow down and stuff like that and have them pray for me and just going to all these meetings in the prophetic realms and stuff and then like you know for me, I, I, it was like a plateau out, all the prophetic books and stuff until eventually it's like God had shifted gears for me. Did y'all have a plateau out or like something that happened or can you pinpoint w where the shift took place? I would say many, many plateaus. And I would say the shift always takes place when I quit going to man or quit going to an external source to, to satisfy that internal need. Mm hmm. And, and when I quit, because I had, in our days, hey, brother so-and-so's got laid hands on us. Yeah. Or, or I got to have this prayer before. Yeah. I had to have the man of God always. Yep. But the day that I started saying, I'm going to come to you, Jesus. Then I'll go to the man and talk about these experiences or whatever. Um, it's always when you I quit um, preaching somebody else's revelation and get my own revelation. There you go. I say it yeah. like that. So we use the term be still a lot mm -hmm. and it and it is in in his example of you know going to to man instead of being still listening to God for ourselves. It, it is also of of uh knowing God's timing. Uh you know, when you pray for something and don't see any results, you know, a lot of people could get discouraged. And a few times we had moments where we were just like, Oh, okay, you know, what's going on here? What are we doing wrong? You know, da da da. -da. And then we just, once we let go and say, okay, we're just going to be still. That way we do. It just, that's it just right. boom, it yeah. happens. And, and, you know, you're just like, okay, well, it's God, God's timing. You just got to rely on that and know that if it don't happen right away. It's And it's lack of understanding, I believe, on our part. Mm -hmm. When we say God's timing, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's just a, a, it's an absentee moment of thought that God does not hold us, keep us, sustain us, that he's our very life. It's just that carnal, humanistic, doubtful moment. And whether you are uh, praying for your own car to be healed in Jesus' name, crank, 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 you know, wake up, roll, when to go up, when to go. I was using it yesterday, Derek. You know, <laughs> the window gets stuck. I bind exactly. that demon that was sent to break my truck and down. <laughs> and it's halfway down, and I'm like, and you, it's an electronic window, not old school like I'm used to. Yeah. Uh, it won't go up. Yeah. And I'm like, go up, gee, all the rain's coming in right there on Jamie's seat. I was like, man, I want Jamie to have to sit. This yeah. is crazy. Rise in Jesus' name. You know, so I'm still, we're still speaking the things and believing God for stuff and asking when the window don't go up. 
what do I need to learn from that? I mean, heck, I think it's a good place to start. You know, and if it don't go oh, up, then you then you fix it. Then you fix it. At least start there. You know what I'm saying? You, and, and can't nobody fault you for that. You know, that we started with faith and then we ended in reason or something. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to something like fixing a flat tire, God, put air in it, God, in Jesus name. I know you, you know, it's, why not start there? Because, I mean, if you don't, you're not going to see any miracles. You're not going to see That's any it. signs. You're not going to see yeah. any wonders of like. You know, reading the scriptures of something that has to connect with your faith. You have to step out. And if you never step out, you're never going to see anything. When it comes to raising the dead, I'm reminded of people like uh, David Hogan, who's raised, I don't know the number, 200, 400 people from the dead. I can't remember the exact number. A lot of people from the dead. But he said he pr he prayed for so many more that were never raised from the dead. We just want to raise one person. But the guy's raised, I want to say 200, but he's prayed for 400 that didn't get up you know what i'm saying but it's the faith to step out and speak to that dead child or that dead grandmother get up in jesus name and pray and fast and stay there and believe until it happened and everybody and he's crazy until it works right you're crazy for talking to the the, the broke down car until that joker cranks up you know yeah right. i had a small experience with that with an aunt you know i always believe that people could be raised from the dead i have no doubt in that whatsoever but the the my doubt in myself i guess you know but i saw an ant and it was dead and i was sitting there and i was like you know god wants that ant to be alive too and that's all it took and that ant started getting up and walking off and i know it was dead because it was dead dead <laughs> it was no getting up from there and I, I didn't have to pray over it. I didn't have to, I didn't have to do any crazy thing. I just knew God wants that ant alive as well. And that ant got up and started walking again. And I was just like, wow, okay. Yeah, I can totally do this. <laughs> well, that was one thing about the men's retreat. We was walking through the woods and we couldn't walk past a dead animal or a dead insect without Jeffrey picking it up and speaking life into it and blowing into it and trying to raise okay. it back from the dead. Um, and I tell you what, like for me, you know, we know I talk about this shift and and uh, with with something happening with the pra practical. I think for me, that was a, a big thing for me years ago. Um, we got into the prophetic and we sat under some people who did home meetings and taught us how to prophesy. And man, we just beautiful encounters in the spirit. All of this stuff at their home meeting. They actually married me and my wife. And um, we really looked up to these people because we were in church. But this was like these people really loved us and took time with us and discipled us and had home meetings and taught us the prophetic. And so all these far out meetings and encounters we went to and visions of Jesus and out of this world stuff. But I remember we were at one of their meetings and I think their cat got hit by a car. And so we were all inside all of these a house full of people who just operated in faith. That's what you got. And uh, the cat got hit by a car. We go outside and they were like, okay, we'll have to bury her. It's okay. And just kind of like went back in. And we're like, no. Like, come on, dude. Like, you're you're like a, a master when it comes to walking in the spirit and miracles and faith. And so for that not to even, we were like kind of offended that he didn't try at least to raise the cat from the dead. He's like, oh, okay, we'll have to tell the kids. And he just left. It's like, hold on, man. Like. At least so for me that was another thing to like hold on there was a disconnect of it being practical at least in our minds we're trying to make it practical versus far far out visions and spirit dreams and whatever which is all beautiful i love all that stuff but the supernatural has to be practical as well at least try it you know so for me when the shift comes of where like stuff started to plateau out was a lot of that was going to church services where there was people with like who had like ailments and and they they wouldn't pray for them on purpose because they knew that they couldn't heal them or something you know like people i remember seeing old men with bent backs they were like an l walking across the and they're like hold on y'all ain't gonna pray for this guy like like where's our faith you know what i'm saying of going to meetings and stuff like so for me there was a plateau there of like okay something's going on you know and um but there was a shift for that and have you and you said you had that happen with the uh with the the insect and stuff like that i mean you're not going to see anything if you don't try, you know, and then maybe it's our fear of, you know, what it does to the ego. If somebody sees you, hey, you're you're a crazy person, 
you're certified sure. crazy. We just try to, you know, our reason shifts from being people of faith to being thinking like the world thinks and the world operates and fear of judgment and ridicule and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's um, the, the main fruit in all of that is transformation and being practical. Um, and they actually see that in your life. Some people need to see something practical. So, you know, yep. uh, being fit, being uh, not overweight, being healthy, uh, not unhealthy, um, you know, just representing, you know, he health in your physical body. Um, you know, that should be a reflection of transformation. Yep. Of the spiritual experience, I believe like, that any any believer who's really on that um, highway to holiness, they're walking with the Lord. Eventually, the Lord deals with your diet. At some point, we did kosher for like eight eight years, man, and eventually, um, and people looked at us like we're putting ourselves under the law and stuff like that. But so hold on, the Scripture says that law is perfect. Like this is you, you. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. You know that if I put this in my body, I'm going to get sick. Like I like I can't just keep putting this stuff in my body and expecting for different results, right? Garbage in, garbage out, kind of thing. And so people thought we were just putting ourselves on the the law, but there was a beauty to it, you know, of like this revelation. Hey, God said don't eat it, then I don't want to eat it. If Jesus didn't eat it, why should I eat it? If Jesus didn't celebrate it, why should I celebrate it? And that's we we. There was a journey about eight years of us just going into messianic judaism and being under the law and learning you know those those the to to live like Jesus did you know that's always been the the motivation behind anything you know of wanting to even today is still fighting for the simplicity of learning and remembering the ancient path how did the prophets operate what did they believe what did they do and so that's a an innocence and a childlike faith for me that I still fight for and is still there let me ask you this. You're in North Carolina, right? Georgia? Where, where, are, you? where, is, where are you? Georgia. Georgia. Prince I keep saying, Georgia. for some reason, I keep thinking, North. you're from North Carolina, though, right? No, no. No, 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 no North no. Carolina at all. The Lord's preparing a way in North No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so let's, uh, let, let, let's transition a little bit, too, because, like, okay, either way, you're in the Bible Belt. And, uh, and, and, you know, Jesus, you know, he's, uh, he's not, the, the Jesus we've been growing up with is not very inclusive. You got to be a Christian. You got to learn scripture. You got to read the Bible like this kind of a thing. And where did it switch for you guys to become more inclusive, to look into some of the things that have, you've looked into, whether it was, you know, breath work or holotropic breathing or, you know, you, you, I know THC is really close, near and dear to your heart. Like, cause you know, in the Bible about there's things that don't fit, you know, yoga, meditation, like these things that you guys have looked into and are like a beautiful part of your life now. And, you know, really fit. Where did that shift and transition come? Like, where did you start? Was it Christian ministers who started speaking about these things? Was it like God revealing his love in such a way that you could see fruit in other people who weren't so-called Christians and but you you know had you seen something that was similar within them like where did that transition take place if it if it was judgmental it would have been unintentionally or unknowingly but probably uh until I really got a revelation when Paul says it's not wise to compare yourselves among yourselves mm -hmm. and when I actually learned that then um, that's where the shift started happening. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a good way to put it, but then, but then what do you, do you actively look up Kundalini yoga? Do you start watching yeah. breath work videos or, or was it something that you seen in other people for that? For me, that's what it, that's why I keep saying that I seen like love in people who weren't Christians yeah. They don't know Just the Bible, but there was like something like, man, that the pursuit for God, for holiness, for justice is within that guy. And he doesn't know anything about Jesus or at least Jesus the way that we've been taught. So just to preface where we are in a very, very small town, uh, there's really nobody. Which are probably all watching right now. They're really. <laughs> And this is not an 
events, but there's there's nobody that we had as an example of oh these people do this and that I want to kind of see or or anything like that. I I honestly truly believe that God slowly just started dropping things in our head and in our face, whether there it was maybe some kind of something on Facebook or but I think it was really just things that he said, Hey, I want to check this out and just being open to it. Yeah. Um, again, we come from the depths of religion. Uh, I got set free from, I, was, I guess I had a religion, didn't even know it. And I got woke up free from it. And once I learned that, then wow, you know, I'm free. And, and being on that free journey allows you to explore and, and talk to God about. So whether it's from THC to, to mushrooms, to, incense oils crystals you yeah. name it you name it just name it until you can have a conversation with god about it and be comfortable about, <laughs> about it like, ask the father yeah. oh like god i'm doing kundalini yoga for the first time you know, am i giving myself over to the enemy to the devil am i uh, gonna receive a, a spirit or something a you get that spirit with god to keep just like enoch you know yeah. the way you just that's what i think of when I think about Enoch walking with God, just every day learning and being one with him. Now, with, with that being said, um, let's see. So do you, you start, do you, do you, uh, for me, I, uh, I use the Bible as a filter. I filter all of the stuff of like, especially when it comes to practices from the East, like, the Bible comes from the East. Like I look at what we would say call Hindus or maybe even Buddhist in their religion and their tradition. I'm like, wow, that looks like when I read the scriptures, like these people who are very modest, they're covering their heads when they pray. Like there's just so much like they're, they're spending time in meditation and prayer and really about walking in the spirit. For some reason in the West, we think that everything spiritual that happened within the scriptures was like an accident. Like they're walking and all of a sudden, boom, they were pulled into a trance and God received, they received a vision. When I, the more study I'm doing, I know that this is something that they practiced. We, we practice in prayer and quieting the mind and sitting in silence and knowing that he be, peace be still and know that he is God. And like, this is a practice that like some of the other religions do a lot better, I think, than the Christians and stuff like that. When you were learning, do you filter a lot of this through the Bible or do you just filter it through prayer and taking it directly to the father or a little bit of both? How did like some of this stuff like being OK and having a peace about some of the things that Christians will say that's a no, no, don't even you can't even participate. Stay away from the appearance of evil, you know, all these scriptures and stuff that they throw out there. Yeah, I would definitely say it was both. Um filtering it through the word and, and then taking it to prayer. We believe in the proceeding word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's mouth. So we believe that that written word actually can become alive. It can become inspiring. It has uh, many, many different uh, messages that that one verse can say, for an example. So, uh, according to the seven spirits of God, you can hear it seven different ways. So when God, so just taking the word and using it as your filter or as your law, some people use the word of God religiously. It just is written. You know. Yeah. They, they, I'm like, well, go ahead and pluck your wife out then since you've been offended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. You know, pe people think. Go ahead, go ahead if you believe it. They and think they it's go. literal. And I'm sure you did too. Hey, I'd rather cut my hand off than cause me to, to sin and stumble. Then, like, then I say, have that conversation with Jesus. Hey, what do you mean? Do I really need? Do to I need to off? cut my hand off because I can't? You know, whatever. I can't control myself. It's like, no, 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 <laughs> not by a long shot. But people take it literal. Yeah, they, they can't see the and, and obviously. Yeah, that's right. It's an allegory. There's symbols and stuff to it, and until you can see the deeper things within the scripture, you don't know that that's talking about members of your body of the of a group of ecclesia a group of people who are bringing sin into the group that you need to get rid of your hand like a certain person who's bringing sin in and bringing divisions and stuff and like wow it's yeah, more yeah. we have to step back it's talking about not just me personally but us as a as a body 
to cut that hand off that member. And so you start like, I remember when I first heard that it blew my mind because I've always took those words of Jesus literal. And I, we, we fall into a lot of crazy dogmas in Christianity when we just take the scriptures literal, especially like revelations. And I mean, revelations is obviously like an easy one to mess up on, but a lot of the, the teachings of Jesus and Paul, you know what I'm saying? We just take it literal when there was like, he's given them a deep, timeless, eternal truth through symbology and telling them about them themselves. Hey, if your hand caused you to stumble, remove it. You know what I'm saying? But he's talking about something deeper and that's all throughout the scriptures, right? Yeah. And you know, a good way that I would uh, say that is kind of like the, the milk of the word and the meat of the word. And, you know, there's, you know, in my immature days, still very immature, but in my awareness of my ir- immaturity back then, um, I come across like that. Come across religious. Come across it was, uh, but got free from that. Um, so yeah, I would say just the journey in itself, growing and walking and experimenting and practicing, and you know, you're gonna do what you believe. And if you really believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're gonna do some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I say that from a position of, you know, mm-hmm. as a Westerner, you know. Um, yeah. A religious Westerner. So, is it something uh, that, that you just are able to identify the fruit in it, no matter what it is, versus like, because I mean, Jesus, th- that changed it for me. Jesus said, look, don't judge anything according to the flesh. Don't judge anything before it's appointed time, but judge all things according to the fruit. Like we do have a green light to say, yeah. hey, is there any fruit being uh, here? And if there's fruit, we want to stay there. We need sustenance and God provides through fruit. We want to hang around places that are fruitful ministries, marriages, friendships, like fruitful endeavors, spiritual practices. Are there, is there any fruit when I do this? What, like, how do I treat people after I do Kundalini yoga? Do I feel more connected to the father? Am I more connected with people? Am I more loving or am I ill tempered? Am, am I possessed by a foreign spirit? Like, to judge by the fruit. So is that something for me, like that's a no brainer. Is that kind of for you guys too? Yeah. yeah. And we, we just enjoy that journey. We really explore that now. Um, we just have fun the best we can. Now. <laughs> we be, right? the, that's big. That's huge. There's no distractions going on, but, um, you know, we spoke briefly before about the balance, uh, being, you know, health coach, pastor, husband, dad, friend, you know, X, Y, Z, all the many hats we wear. So, you know, there's days uh, I tend to get unbalanced in my walk. I I have uh, tendencies to act like the old man that the word refers to, you know, that guy before Christ that had that shift. And um, whether that's frustration or uh, irritability or whatever, um, thank God for the balance that, husband and wife has because when I'm when I'm down she's up and that don't mean like we don't clash it ain't a bad way yeah yeah uh, but in my perspective she's always there to pick me up support me walk with me not that we got any bad days but we all encounter yeah. depression we still go through depression and question life and all kind of yeah it's a we're going through that. you're not and exempt you, you know <laughs> But the journey, man, just being free to journey and uh, an example, breath work. I know you support breath work. And as a holistic health coach on that side of it, or even as a disciple in Jesus Christ, a believer in Jesus Christ, there's a benefit to breath work. But at the time, you know, I was maybe, hey, this is new to me. What is this? What is breath work? What are the benefits of it? What's the side effects? What's adverse? What's good? What, why should I do it? And I just, we just ran across whatever you substitute breath work for anything. Yeah. And we just explore it. And we had, because of the assurance we had of, with the Holy Spirit, with, with God's yeah. spirit that resides in us, that union that we have, we're free and comfortable now, especially with a little bit of wisdom that we try to operate in, we're able to explore yeah. these earthly religions, these earthly practices, this 
the things they do in the earth, but we also get to explore in the spirit too. So it's just we uh, ascending, tr- tr- ascending, if I can say that right. Transcending. Uh, walking in your sonship, walking mm-hmm. as a son, as a manifested son. You know, that's to me, uh, that's the shift. That's the day I got born again, the day we enter into uh, the Lamb's Book of Life as we, we know it. The days our name is recorded. Mm-hmm. in him that's where we live and have our being and that day that i was awakened a little over 10 years ago has just simply produced the transformation in my physical health our marriage our relationship with our children um life as we know it today has not it's nothing more than abundant and more abundant it's just more abundant life <laughs> <laughs> in every area the life our physique our physical wellness mental wellness peace um by the way speaking of a benefit of the breath work you know just helping to relieve times of anxiety uh being able because i'm a i can be known as an overthinker I may think too much i might yeah. get on a certain thought train and it's got it's affected my mood and um got me in a bad position. I might need to go breathe for a few You got to practice what you preach, man. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. So we still still utilize the breath work today. Still, We still incorporate it in our daily practice. So, And thank God there's a variety of ways, so many diverse ways to do breath work, so many methods. And um, we're able to, if we can just practice one a day intentionally, yeah, uh, it really helps. Uh, maintain the reality in which you want to live in. So breath work, hey, I give it a thumbs up now. You know, I'll you say know, um, I'm watching people like Wim Hof, you know, and, yeah, um, even some uh, other breath work notables out there. It's it, it's a benefit to me. So I tend to share that with others as a health coach, and especially when they talk about their times of anxiety or. Mm-hmm or other mental states they're in that they don't truly want to be in, but don't really know how to get out of. Yeah. That's where it really kind of allows him to reset and get a new perspective on whatever has them brought down at the moment. Reset, refresh, and renew. Um, yeah, be still, right? Well, uh, I think one of the most interesting things that we just you just kind of pass over in this conversation is that stands out to me is the fact that you're conscious of you're talking about like conscious of not being that man that you used to be those the the sides of the ego the sides of you that are um not healthy you know they're they're real but as far as like the balance of like okay i don't i'm conscious that 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 person exists that that side of me exists where the majority of people whether you christian or not like they don't even know that there's that they they kind of fluctuate you know, throughout those, th- th- those personas, if you will. Um, and they're not even conscious of it. So just being conscious that that character flaw, that, that, uh, side of you exists and is at war and you don't want to feed it. Like that's huge. If that's all you got out of all of the spiritual practice and all of it is like, there's a bad side of me that, um, there's two wolves within me. There's a, the flesh in the spirit. There's the ego in the spirit, like that I need to feed the spirit man so that this other side, I mean, when we look at, you know, all types of movies and star Wars, there's the force, there's the good and bad, there's duality, there's the yin and the yang, and you never want to let the dark side overshadow the light. And I think that BC before Christ, like a lot of us, we weren't aware that there was a war. We weren't wasn't aware that there was a dark side that that wanted to uh to win and, and wanted to uh remain in our members you know and so uh just being conscious that that's something that you're aware of is so profound but we just we pass over it like nonchalantly like, oh yeah i just want to make sure that that old man doesn't rise back up because the, the 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 unconscious man has no idea they don't even have that inner dialect with themselves that that's there yeah, I like that term, uh, Christ consciousness, and I know that can go on different trails now. Uh, that means a whole lot more than it ever did, probably when it first was 
termed or coined or whatever, but uh, just having the mind of Christ, man. Um, there's really no better high. It's really no uh, sweeter life. Uh, it is peace, uh, joy. You know, it's it's patience and self control. It's 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 grace, power. So um, it's all in the transformation, I believe. If I was to judge a tree by the fruit it bears, if I was going to use that judgment, a filter, the word, uh, the word of Jesus as my filter. Um, I think we do judge righteously. I believe that's what righteousness or dikayon is, is fairness. And we're able to actually discern, you know, where Paul even mentioned in his place, um, spiritual judges, all things spiritual, but we ourselves mm-hmm. judge no man, yep. very spiritual. So just having that, that uh, consciousness, that awareness, mindfulness, you know, that's another good word I use in my health coaching uh, side of it when I'm not doing it on the mystic side. Um, just being mindful, you know, gratefulness, you know, I use little tools to get people to change their paradigm, you know, to change their habits, to change something, to, you know, interrupt that flow of normality that's got them in bondage or got them down a trail that they, they say they want to get off of, but yet can't find themselves getting off of it. Whether that's the chocolate cake, whether that's this, whether it's whatever it is. <laughs> the hell. So whenever we start doing these spiritual truths into their physical issues, they start thinking spiritually and they're like, do what, you know, down here in the South, this is like new age. This is new tech. And it is to them, you know, yeah. um, but we're just bringing, you know, the mysteries of the word. We're, we're walking as sons in our sonship. Mm-hmm. And, um, if we can speak to somebody's thoughts, and if we could calm the wind and stop the waves, the emotions that that's going on in their life, if we can speak to the elements and take authority over that and walk as sons in the earth, both physically and in the mental soulless realm, which comes from the spirit, that's nothing but life and life more abundant. It's walking in the realities of the spirit. And um, so, yeah, it's such a journey. It's such a life learning process of walking every day, being real, being transparent, having precious dear people in your life that you can do life with, like to be real and transparent. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where I could shut up and Jamie really take off, but (laughs) just being real and doing life for real and being real and being willing to keep the conversation open. Dude, there's some stuff you probably believe that I'd be like, do what? I never heard that before. That's, you know, what? You know, you know, I might hold up, do say that again. Let me think, you know, don't shut down. That's yeah. what I've learned. Why do you say that? Teach me, show me. I want to, you know. Yeah. And I if I get it, life. good. If not, good. <laughs> and, and keep on doing life. Yeah. So Versus cutting uh, them off and say, hey, man, stay away from this guy, man. And I'm always making sure, you know, on my side, you know, it's iron sharpens up and we sharpen one another. I always want to be more on the duller side. I always want to be getting sharpened. Not that I do that intentionally but i hope to do the same for my brother yeah uh, and in times of needing sharpening man help sharpen me in this area help or whatever that sharpening is uh doing life together and vice versa so it's a beautiful relationship that we have in the spirit we get to sharpen each other we get to help each other be there for one another do life with one another but it's only going to be whenever we come to the unity of oneness that we're one in him and he's in all yeah. of us, whether we realize it yet or not. Yeah. When we come to that Christ consciousness, that awareness, yeah. uh, I call it sonship. When we become manifested mm-hmm. sons in the earth, that's where we are going to experience the greater works, the greater things, the more. And again, we're just a snippet. Uh, I know we ate up a lot of your time today, but we just had, this is just a snippet of what we get to do for eternity. For sure. For sure. And it's, it's think beautiful. on that is meditation enough. You know, yeah. Psalms 27, verses 1 through 3, uh, the Psalms, that he, he says it perfect. 1, 2, 3, or 4, you know, that first part. The Psalms 27, man, David just talks about the one thing I desire, the one thing I seek 
is just to behold his beauty, to sit in his temple and acquire of the Lord. So um, we get to do that. To do. And as we do that, we, 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 we share that with others, whether we do yeah. it help and life coaching, whether we do it ministry or whether we do it just right here in the house, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which we do. It's yeah. very real here. And to be real with the family in different parts of the country, different parts of the state, um, we get to do that. And it's such a, such a blessing. Awesome, man. You guys got a couple more minutes. Sure. Sure. A couple more. Um, so, you know, your, your, your spiritual life, it's a uh, it's an overflow. Right. And so as you are walking in the spirit, as you're communing with the Lord, as you're hearing from the Lord, it flows out and you get to share with others. I think, first of all, because you're conscious, again, that you're doing the inner work, God allows you to speak into the lives of of others. If you I think if you ever cease to do that, there's a conviction, there is an imbalance there. So as long as you're keeping that going, it's going to continue to flow through your ministry, through the health coaching and life coaching and things that you bring to the table. And, uh, and I know Jamie shares in that with you and you guys minister together, but something for her, which seems to overflow a bit is through her art as well. The, uh, created for the kingdom art. And she has some really beautiful art that she brings to the table. Talk a little bit about like your, your art and creating that being an expression of your faith and being able to physically create and craft something that inspires you, that triggers a memory of something spiritual or a timeless truth, whether it's a you know, some of the art that you brought to the table and scriptures and, and phrases and stuff like that, which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I've always been an artist. Uh, I get it from my, my dad. And uh, when we we started going to this church, I had never been to a church like it before. When I sat down, I saw these people painting. And I says, what? I says, <laughs> worship and paint at the same time I am in my place <laughs> uh, and I just thought it was the greatest thing so I did a lot of research into the worship arts and um, I just I was very grateful for for that because art is an expression of yourself yeah and you know a lot of times people look at art as like the darkness that you're releasing and your emotions and I was just so excited to be able to express my spirituality and what God's speaking through his people into artwork. So, Beautiful. yeah, um, I've, <clears throat> I do art in different ways, you know, um, if it's in a corporate setting, uh, whatever I, I, I feel like the Holy spirit wants to, to minister to someone, um, uh, put it on paper or on a canvas or, or so, um, that's kind of like a, in the moment thing, but also I think the Lord also gives me, uh, themed artwork to do as far as, um, I started doing, uh, and this was at first a, a, a no, no from the church. I would rip up the Bible oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, glue it on a surface. Uh, whether it be canvas, cardboard, rocks, uh, all kinds of other things, and and then whatever scripture verse or or word, you know. Uh, and these Bibles, I just want to denote for all the other. Okay, these were Bibles that were disclaimer uh, old and very poor shape. Lost yeah. their power. It was just <laughs> okay. it was incomplete and very ragged, and they were beautifully um, aged. Yeah. But that, and it, yeah, because it's real old, but just really, really. So before you would do something, um, one would throw it away or burn it or whatever, preserve it, whatever. We put it in an art form, you know, yeah. so that it continued to live on as the word does. Uh, so we get to incorporate the, those Bibles when we say rip it up it, yeah. in a very religious way. <laughs> Spiritual way. <laughs> No, that's awesome. And so do, do you see yourself like teaching on this at all? Like expression? Obviously, you teach your, your kids and your family, but like in a corporate way of like just, you know, doing it maybe as a seminar or let, helping people to step out in prophetic art. Have you ever done any of that or do you see yourself doing it? I do. Uh, early on when I started, I felt like the Lord led me in that direction as far as preparing me for it. But it hasn't 
you know, I haven't done a seminar. I've done a few things with some people, obviously my own children. Um, I, I teach at a private Christian school and I am the art teacher. Uh, and this coming up year, that's going to actually be one of my things. It's doing it with music and worship music and uh, really teaching them that aspect of it, which I'm really excited about. As an introduction, maybe yeah. it may be something new to Oh, uh, it, hey, it, it, just it something small, be. man. That's yeah. all it takes, yeah. a seed. A seed. Yeah. You yeah. plant. You planted a seed when they were young that when now when they get older they can look back on it um what what church was it that uh that you guys went to where you seen them doing the prophetic art and worship and stuff like that was yeah. it a, it was a morning star or something was somebody affiliated with that kind of stuff or? Yeah, it was a, morning, they, um, a morning star affiliated church yeah. and they, uh, they operate the prophetic and that was the first place that i found on my journey mm -hmm. in my small hometown um, I caught wind of this crazy bunch, um, but but not like that. But it's yeah. a little different out there. Like nobody could really describe. And um, they wave flags or they yeah. do something. So I was like, well, hey, let me go check this out. They dance in the spirit. Um, yeah. You can only go to so much Baptist services, <laughs> and yeah, prayer meetings and revivals, and you're like, man, you know, where's the gold dust, so to speak? But um, <laughs> but because of that, yeah, yeah, it opened us up to a lot. Sure did. Yeah, I remember so they, um, they, talking about they hard work. They were real. Uh, they gave us a, a opportunity to be exposed to something new and operate in it. So mm -hmm. um, it was right here in our small town. So that That's was awesome. Very big. Yeah. yeah. No, it's gro It's definitely grown because I remember like hearing about you know when I'm I've kind of been in a prophetic for a while. So like knowing about morning star like in their conception or when they blew up it's i mean 2000 2001 where i got introduced and i think some of that stuff was even older but once it got really big like seeing how it caught on and seeing how other people now we can have this conversation where people are talking about let's draw a prophetic art piece and uh shout out to uh, i have a friend watching amanda ferris who's really good and she does this as well and she's doing all these paintings and they're just inspired and they tell a story and it's something prophetically interpreted but um to see that it's awesome and you know going back to the kid thing when i was i remember going to vacation bible school and they had us like draw a picture of jesus you, you they had all these stations like for 30 minutes you'd go here for 30 minutes you go there for 30 minutes you go here for like two three hours or whatever and this one station was a uh, art they wanted us to color and draw so it was like okay everyone draw a picture of what you think jesus looked like and I remember just doing it being silly, and I don't know even why I remember this, but being silly, but I drew a picture of Jesus with rainbows and stuff. He had rain, purple hair, green hair, and, you know, it just was all this rainbow kind of person. And I do it, I did it being silly, and they looked at it, it's like, I like this one the most. This is the most creative, and this is probably what he looked like. And I was like, oh, wow, I was just kind of being silly. But seeing the the openness to uh to to create and having someone see that identity in you of like like creativity is a huge part of god's heart he's the most creative you know person we can talk to or hang out with and he loves to show his art off to us whether it's in this realm and gazing at a sunset or the mountains or the grand canyon or any type of animals or you know the any just beauty that exists that he loves to show us and uh or even other dimensions and heavenly realms you know we can tap into and see those kind of that that art that he used to hey you want to see this realm it's beautiful let me show you you know and we have that same heart we create something beautiful and we want it to tell a story we want it to we sign it at the bottom we autograph it with our name and so hey you know who created this i made that i make songs you know and i want people to go on a journey and impart love and peace and wisdom when they encounter it and so i think that like some people listen to it eh, whatever don't really care for it but other people are like wow this is amazing it changed my life and i think that god being the the, the most uh, prolific painter and artist creator out there man we share in that that uh, that love because we're made in this likeness and image of being a creator so that's the beauty of it what's cool too is like alex gray has a school called or an art school and and, and church essentially called cosm and they're more into the psychedelic realm and meditations and things like that but they go on these vision quests and they come back and they paint 
the beings, they paint what the different realms look like, the cogs, sacred geometry, and they teach people how to do it. And uh, and they listen to music, they'll go to festivals and trance music and all this kind of stuff. And they're doing the same thing that we've been doing like in the in the churches and the prophetic stuff for a long time. So it's really cool to see how they're like it's one in the same there. Like they're they've really tapped into painting and the art and people are going live on Facebook and they'll have this music playing and doing their paintings prophetically and stuff. And so I think man, art is so especially Alex Gray, his art communicates what that realm looks like and it imparts something to us, man. Like something yeah. is it, it communicates a message, you know, whether it's music or whether it's a, a painting or a saying or a phrase and I think the more far out, the better, right? Some people are just like misunderstood, but like when you just, like when you color outside the lines a little bit, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and and the thing about it is, is God can work creativity in anything, um, not just painting, drawing, music, dance. Uh, I've recently, in the last, last couple of years, started doing magic. And it was basically just a, it, it's tying knots with fabric. And it was really just because I thought it was beautiful and I wanted to try it. And as I, I was creating a very large piece, I just said, all right, Lord, you know, and I just started nodding in, and, and I wasn't really having any kind of thing in my mind as far as the outcome of what I wanted it to look like. And I worked on it and I worked on it and I worked on it and I just let, let it flow. And when I got finished with it, I said the words, it is finished. finished. And then we looked at it and it looks like Jesus on the cross, a macrame. Right. Yeah. And, and it was just like, wow. So among you know, many other things too, God can <laughs> use creativity in any form. <laughs> it's so amazing. It's that. It, yeah. speaks, so it speaks. So God works through her. We actually have the big uh, easel canvas and all that, you know, right there in our meditation room in our sanctuary. Uh, so, so we still promote support, pray over the prophetic art, the prophetic dance, the anything spiritual, anything to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Your image God in the earth. Man, yep. that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Got a few so more minutes for a couple of questions from the chat. Sure. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, there's a couple of questions that came through people joining the conversation. For one, I want to go to, uh, let's start here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Gavin wanted to know about smoking. Let me see. Because he's talking about the uh, health coaching and stuff like that. I'm going to see if I can find the exact question. Okay, here it is. Uh, it says, how can he stop smoking? Is there a special prayer for this battle in your opinion? Like what's the, for someone who is conscious, but they just kind of have that smoking addiction. How can they quit smoking? Just real basic. We I start them out with that's just a thought. It's a, a the bad habit. If he thinks it's a bad habit for him, um, you tell me to quit smoking. I, I mean, I may smoke once a month. He may be smoking ten times a day. So you know, just to get on the same page is okay. What are you smoking? How much are you smoking? Because I know many people. You take the smoke away from them, it'll kill them, and that's not the goal. So if you want to quit smoking, there's going to be a process to it. There's going to be a little journey. There'll be a learning curve. It'll be something you probably suffer through. If you think you're going to break an addiction and suffer through it, whatever you, the thing is that's got you from not wanting to break the thing you know you should break, then that's where, you know, we, we counsel one another. Uh, I show him the other side, the way to think about it, the, the Christ way of looking at it, that he suffered through it. And you'll, you'll suffer as much as you think you're worthy to suffer, which you, you shouldn't suffer that much uh, because he bore that for us. So whatever suffering, addiction, um, that is. So I really bring in a spiritual enlightenment on that, on the health coach side or just the secular side to answer that. Yeah. Uh, you know it's bad, you know it's going to kill you, and you don't. That's called insanity. You need to really think about what you're doing. So I... Either way you do it, you're getting, you need to think about why you're still doing what you're doing. And you need to ask yourself many questions when you're in your closet, praying to that greater connection, whatever that is. Uh, if you believe in God, if Jesus is your mediator, then it's going to be good for you. It's going to be, 
that's where you will learn. That's where the addiction gets broke. It's just by having the reality revealed to you from Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ. And he bore that curse, that uh, bad habit, that destructive practice, whatever. Uh, that thing you won't know more of, he made a way. And, and that it can sound like a very vague answer, but when it comes to that kind of question, it is very personal. Personal. It varies from person to person. Uh, there's no answer that works for everybody. No so formula. Speak, no, you know, yeah. Um, That's, yeah. So it is very individualized. Well. It's a good way to say it. Yeah. And again, it's uh, initiating that conversation with God, just being real, being real with yourself and being real with yourself in front of God, with God. Yeah. So uh, like David did, you know, come to God with a true heart and yeah. truth. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, for me, like I look at any any type of character defect or thing I need to stop doing. Um, sure. A lot of people will like try to um, uh, they you know, they, they have these character flaws and stuff and they just want God to take it away. Take it away, Lord. I, make me stop. I can't stop. Take it away, Lord. And usually God doesn't take it away. So I found that like it's a it's a free uh, free will is huge. Your free will act of worship that I get to choose as a sovereign human, choose this day who I will serve. I get to choose if I want this or God. So for me, uh, uh, any type That's of addiction right. like that is like, yeah, my flesh wants it, my body wants it, but I want the Lord more. I want my destiny to be fulfilled more. I want to walk in my calling more. I want to honor the Lord with everything that I do more. So it's like to turn from the things that are killing you. It's like this I have to, it's a, it's a privilege that I get to lay it down at your feet, you know, daily. Cause I want to do it. I'm addicted to it. My flesh wants it. It makes me feel good. It's an easy escape. It, like when I, you smoke cigarettes, the, the instant nicotine calms my spirit, calms yeah. me down. Well, God has other ways that he wants to calm you down where he is the source. And so to be conscious of like, I want to smoke. It's I, I'm addicted. I like it. It's good, even though it's unhealthy. But Lord, I lay it down at your feet and I want to give it to you. And so for me, all of those, that's how I deal with any addiction or anything that um, that I need to lay down. I just give it to him, you know, and look at it as a form of worship and don't try to run from it. Take it away, God, like acknowledge it, because I think, you know, as a health coach and, and seeing the spiritual side to it, that we're most of this stuff is, is we're dealing with symptoms anyway. Like the smoking is a symptom of us being too anxious and the scripture gives us ways to deal with anxiety. Right. Or smoking is a reason for us to have instant comfort because we don't feel comfortable in our own skin. So we smoke because it brings us comfort. What it, we we drink so we can feel normal or to whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like a lot of these symptoms are uh, manifestations of a deeper root. Would you say that? Yeah, yeah, and the more Jesus, the more freedom, the more uh, more separation um, from anything destructive, whether it's physically or mentally or spiritually. Um, so yeah, growing in uh, growing in wisdom, you know, over my my ten year journey, um, God is ever so wise, and uh, when you start waking up to that, start being aware of that, start seeing that happening in your life. Uh, it really, really forms transformation. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, smoking, uh, usually counseling somebody, what, well, Gavin, was it that you said? Yeah, Gavin, Gavin. yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, usually about after a week of just uh, some meditation, if you do meditation or not, um, or breath work or not, whatever you do that's natural, um, that kind of chills you out, um, in that time, uh, have that conversation with you and God about why do you smoke? Why do you continue to? And and and, and listen. He'll speak to you. Yeah. He'll tell you what you need to hear, whatever that is. And then he'll give you wisdom on that. And then you know, I went from um, I went from drinking all the time. Then I met Jesus to no drinking none of the time. To now, I get to drink anytime. But I use that with wisdom. Yeah. It, it took a process of growing yeah. and go through that. But once you have authority over the thought or the habit, the flesh, once yeah. you take that, once you have that authority through that knowledge and understanding of God, then you get set free from it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I so think seven days of meditation, breath work, if, if you do those things, uh, 20 minutes a day, I, if I had to prescribe it, you know, you go. <laughs> in a legalistic way, you know, here's your yeah. prescription. And, and this is what this is what Jeffrey and Jamie does, guys. So if y'all want to work with them, they they're definitely available too. So if you want to, if you need somebody to walk it out with you, um, they definitely are available for that. Um, for me, I think that like um, those symptoms, like smoking, every I mean, those those are like very outer things that we all deal with like everybody can see that you smoke you always smell like smoke you spend money on smoking like and there's other things that we do but i feel like the the awesome thing about dealing with that stuff any sin or any character deflect defect any addiction early on is the fact that once you deal with the external stuff then you get used to the same it's part of the sanctification process and you're able to start doing the inner work okay why am i addicted to smoking oh I remember when I smoked my first cigarette and it reminds me of being a child again. It reminds me of hanging out with my dad. My dad gave me my first cigarette and this is what connects me. Like it's different. Just like you said, it's different for everybody, but go into where that connection is and doing the inner work. So once you start dealing with the external stuff, you can then in turn start dealing with all the internal stuff. Why do I gossip? Why when somebody brings up this person's name do I do does my blood boil I get angry when I hear about my enemies having successes in their life why do I get mad why do I want secretly want my enemies to be destroyed and why do they why am I jealous of people who are successful like doing the inner work and so it's part of that stuff so if you want to kick start it which is this is what we do we champion this work man the inner work this is it's becoming really uh, it's catching on. A lot of people are wanting to do the inner healing and deal with trauma and stuff like that. So if you want to kickstart it, deal with the stuff that you know on the outside needs healing. You know, yeah. the cursing, the bad habit, the excessive drinking, the excessive smoking, whatever. Deal with it, and then God will begin to, you know, be faithful and start showing you the inner workings of the spirit, man. And I believe in walking in our destiny, we have to do that. That's part of the process. He won't allow us to ascend to the next levels until we respond with love to all of that childhood trauma and he'll unlock more because we couldn't handle it. It would probably kill us if we seen it all like what it really looks like and all the attachments and spirit. You know, people talk about cutting cords of attachments and spirits that are hanging around because we've come into agreement with different belief systems and religious thoughts and ideologies or ungodly beliefs is what we call them and so but doing that inner work man is definitely where it's at and there's a lot of people who are uh who are ready to do that um let me ask you this to another question we got several here uh because we mentioned kundalini um and there's a lot of people talking about it these days now uh, we talked about kundalini yoga which is a form of yoga um someone wants to know this is uh, um somebody says is kundalini a spirit or is kundalini demonic in your opinion what would you say i would say um that you would be best to answer that uh, <laughs> Mars, to describe it and all of that yeah okay but, uh, well i mean you i mean your expression but, with kundalini yoga what do you feel do you feel you're communing with the spirit by the name of kundalini when you do Kundalini yoga. If I am, I'm very unaware of it, and I'm not doing that. So, um, <laughs> and Kundalini was big at one time with me, and when I say yeah. big, I did it like maybe two or three weeks in a row. Yeah, you know, did it um, just enough to get into it to say, all right, what is it? Just to be able to talk to God. It's hard to have a conversation with God never doing something before. And I'm, I don't recommend dabbling in thing dark or antichrist. I'm talking about with an open mind, an open conscience, secure in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ Jesus, all things were created by him, for him, or through him. There's nothing that exists that exists that shall not bow to its name. So it's we have the authority that we get to interact um, and and explore, so to speak, again, the humanistic, the physical realm. Yeah. So I look at yoga more uh, a physical thing. However, I know the spiritual aspect of it is uh, a reflection or connected to it. Yeah. So I acknowledge both. 
I have to acknowledge both. And some people put more emphasis on one or the other. Um, so I acknowledge both sides. But it's also in your conscience. If you feel like it's not right and you get a bad feeling, don't do it. Uh, you know, if you're going against your conscience just to try conscience. something, then that's, that's where, you know. And, and those in Christ that's aware of their uh, existence in Christ Jesus, um, the blood has, you know, purged our conscience. Yeah. And, and we're able to ha really trust and lean in on our conscience. So, um, you know, that's a very mystical and intriguing uh, subject to talk about conscious and consciousness and all. But no, um, at first, just because it was new, maybe I was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I noticed, I was um, being more flexible, uh, more still. And that I was really enjoying my time with God doing a movement or two. Um, yeah, so very unbiased toward it. Uh, not for it, not against it, but I do recommend it. That's what's up. You, you do recommend it. So you wouldn't recommend somebody to be doing something that's going to harm them. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to benefit them. And you haven't seen any negative side effects or benefits. The, um, yeah. the problem with a lot of this stuff is like, you know, we mention it and then people get into you say they start doing their own research, you know, and so we'll talk about how Kundalini Yoga is beautiful, changes our lives, helps us become more in tune and tap into the spirit, even through Christ. And so, but you start Googling, you'll find all kind of weird stuff about Kundalini. It's a demon spirit that wants to in, invade your life and I man, just all kind of crazy stuff, really. Um, but that's the same thing with anything at all like if we start speaking about the holy spirit and how much he's changed our life and this fellowship with the holy spirit people can start googling the holy spirit and they're liable to find somebody who believes that the holy spirit isn't present or at, at work in the life of a believer anymore that it's you know what i'm saying there's a lot of christians who believe that god doesn't speak to the heart god doesn't it has to be just the word only god only speaks through his word he doesn't have a still small voice he doesn't communicate with believers there is no work that's being done on your conscience and those kind of things and so like i really believe that uh as believers and us having this this conversation we need to talk about kundalini yoga especially if it's something that we that we do it's it's we need to talk about the holy spirit so we can kind of give a, a right understanding that way that somebody's conscious will will be okay you know what I'm saying? With something beautiful. And that's big, though. You know, you, like you said, if it's your conscious that's telling you no, then you can't. But if it's your conscious that's telling you yes, then you might have to. It's something that's calling out to you and it's showing up in your life for a reason. It's bidding you. But there's some fear there. There's some hysteria there because of things that we've heard. And we don't have anybody to talk to about it. So that's for, you You know, we come to the Cru True Seeker podcast and we'll talk about it our opinions we might not be experts but this is our relationship with it you know no yeah. it's always iron sharpening iron it's always two trees you know um it, it, it's it's real good and when you come together and talk these things out do life you know whether you counseling coaching um just doing life man it, it does it really mm. it really does promote growth and it's very edifying very yeah. encouraging there's no, I mean, holding it in is the, the enemy. When you hold it in and you act like you don't do it or I'm scared of what people are thinking, but that's the enemy. You got to live in, in the light, all of it. Bring it to the table. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I find myself dying to every day, brother. Um, I make sure I die to that every day. I'm getting on to her about not doing a good enough job of keeping me as. Uh, it's your woman. fault that I'm not. <laughs> to blame the woman, right? Um, but yeah, uh, doing life like that is what yeah. we enjoy doing, Derek, as a family. And, um, you know, we have people, we we get to speak into their lives today. We're very privileged to yeah. know some dear people that mm -hmm. we've learned um, on our journey. So they, they do the same for us. They sharpen us. We sharpen them. It's mutual. We esteem each other greater than one another. Yeah. And just be so super transparent, you know. And uh, we enjoy doing life, real life, with real people. Where we can talk about anything. And you just refuse to be offended. And if you do get offended, you say, time out. I'm offended. Let me go learn what that means. Let me, yeah. I, but I'm not stopping the conversation. I'm not, I'm not mad and angry or you're just time out. Let me think about that. 
Um, but to keep to be able to come back and keep going with the conversation, keep journeying together, keep doing life, that's precious, man. We love that the it's most. It's becoming more popular well, with, with, with so believers. The awareness is rising in the earth. And, do, you, uh, do, you, do you think it's because, and even with your own journey, is it because you've been open and vulnerable with with you've been open and vulnerable with people and then they leave like they act like it's okay. Hey bro, you can be open and honest and you're okay. And you become open and honest and they're like, Hey, don't talk to them, man. They're, they're shot out. You know what I'm saying? Cause we've been let down. So now we know that's a thing that if you're open and honest with people in the church, they'll, they'll, they're like, we understand the scripture says that healing comes through confession. Hey man, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. I believe this. Give me something like I need help. I'm being, and it takes me being open and honest. But you find out that there's some people who would take that and tell every they'll gossip about you. You being open and honest, but they went and told all kind of people, or even brought it to Facebook and like. So for me, I learned from that and said, okay, don't do that. Like I need to be open because there's something that's working against us being open and honest. And so being conscious of that, um, again, it's it's there's a lot of people who are starting to champion that and they're moving in it and there's people who I, we can disagree with and it's all good like our relationship is is deeper than some doctrinal differences that i learned from watching a youtube video that meant a lot to me or something you know whatever it may be so is it something is there a reason that you champion that did you have to deal with that at some point in what regard and um that that you're conscious of i need to be i need to move past the offense I need to know that our relationship is deeper than, you know, your re revelation of the cross or your re revelation of speaking in tongues or what, you know what I'm saying? Sincerity, if I hear you correctly. Yeah. Just being you in the, the, the sincere faith of God, the sincere love in Christ Jesus, it definitely makes you vulnerable and you're going to. People going to come, people going to go. We had one pastor in our life at one time said, buddy, you just driving the bus. You're going to have a bus load. Sometimes you ain't going to have one or two. Sometimes you won't have nobody. You just keep driving the bus. Just people keep are going to get on. People are going to get on. They're going to come and go. And uh, he said, just keep on keeping on. And that was his way of communicating at me at that time. And uh, But learning, uh, mm -hmm. learning that, experiencing that, and growing in that um, is beautiful. It's so yeah. beautiful. And yeah. so when we do find ourselves offended with somebody, we like, hold up, wait a minute. You know, we... And we remind ourselves, just keep driving the bus. <laughs> but we we start examining, though. We do it. What's this plank in my eye now? Yeah. I'm offended. I got a name plank in my eye. I'm ready to pluck out. It's offending the mess out of me. All right, no, no, no. I don't need to pluck my eye out. I need to examine myself. Then that little speck in your eye don't offend me. Uh, we share the same speck. Yeah, we got the same uh, perspective. So doing life together really facilitates um, a lot of being open yourself up to being vulnerable. Man, we got hurt a bunch, uh, and it's it was just because of growing. It's part of the process, you know. Um, but it's saving it's other people from 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 getting hurt, right? Because you're conscious of like, hey, this is, you got to be careful. You facilitate that easy yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you see a potential tripping or hazard, a stumbling block or whatever. Yeah. 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 You, you, you got a little wisdom with that zeal now. Yeah. So, yeah, you help. Definitely. But it, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful process to do life with people. Uh, whether we do it health coaching or not. And, uh, and, and one aspect that we do with our health coaching and life coaching, we don't charge. We just only receive donation. So it's you, whatever, whatever your conscience tells you to give us, we we accept that fully at that time, because um, we know that if you do life with us once, we know that we'll probably do life a lot forever. <laughs> That's good stuff. So um, it, it's really cool because now I'm seeing like in that. I'm seeing Jesus so much more in the diversity of really understanding the body of Christ, the hand and the foot and the eye. Like we need each other. A group of 17 hands is, is going to be useless. We're not going to be able to travel far. We're not going to be able to see. 
So now, so because in, in in religion and in church, we, we all had to kind of like look the same, act the same, be the same. We all want to be evangelists. We all want to be soul winners. We all want to, this is what it looks like. And so now we're understanding that the body of Christ is diversity. And he does look like this. He does look like that. He is a little bit of it all. So for us to come together with our differences, the religion I come from, like if you disagree, you're done. It, it's off with your head. You're done. So now it's like, because I, I know that that's a thing. I'm okay, m moving past that. And what makes us different, I'm going to celebrate it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Even if I don't believe it, obviously, if I feel like it's harmful or detrimental, you want to, you got to use wisdom to not just let anything fly, but to be more open and inclusive. Because I think that we're seeing Jesus in that now more than ever. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So like the, the past uh, few months, you know, of the COVID-19, you know, um, that, that, what an interesting time that was, not, not to get off on that, but I think it did at the end of the day, whatever day that might be for those, uh, it, it allowed time to meditate. It allowed time to uh, be still, hopefully, or get out your norm, you know, kind of move to another country. Uh, get out, you know, a little shaking, a rattling, discomfort, suffering, whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe in the past uh, weeks, nothing but good will start rising. You know, addictions being broke in the form of smoke. You know, uh, addictions and bondages and things that people are suffering through. Maybe they'll during uh, this time of reflection hear and act on what they heard. And actually, uh, if it's help they need to seek out, maybe they do that. Maybe they actually act on it and not pass it by one more time, you know, uh, the next day, the next week, whatever. So, um, again, transformative grace. I believe that grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I, I believe that he wants you to have a more abundant life in the earth. And I believe he's put uh, a team, a fivefold, whatever you want to call it. He, he's put those in the earth, sons, to, to disciple the nations. Um, you know, there should come a shift, I believe, there is you, you start from, you go from being discipled to actually start discipling and, and, and then uh, growing in that stage also. Uh, it's one thing to be discipled when you're having to be humble and you're having to submit and, you're just breaking off all kind of stuff. And once you start becoming disciplined a little bit, we got to get that keyword discipleship from discipline, being disciplined in my flesh, being disciplined in my soul, my thoughts, my emotions, being disciplined in what I eat and how I eat and the way I do daily life. It produces that transformation that is, that leads to more abundant life. So, um, I thank God for the um, the immortality that's available to us in the Word. That just it just downright fills you up. It, it really feeds you. It really sustains you. It waters you. And um, longevity in the earth. I definitely start. We're starting to hear it now, just in the coaching industry. But spirituality it's really going to start growing leaps and bounds. And uh, I believe people are going to really start living longer and healthier. And one contributing factor will, they won't do bad things such mm -hmm. as smoking two packs of cigarettes a day for 10 years. Like Jamie used to, you know, <laughs> boy, throw her under the bus. Well, we speak from exist, uh, example, you know, we do all this, you know, and that's part of the stuff we share not on zoom we share in the house um we share those real experiences we mm -hmm. do life for real so walking walking the walk you talk the talk one last question here somebody watching on uh d live by the name of testimony um what's what's, what's your, your your nationality your heritage didn't you say that you uh, you come from a native american background as well i've never done any uh blood work or ancestry or genie. I don't, I've never searched that out no further than my biological mother um, because I am adopted. And so I did reunite with her, but I never got to inquire 
you know, the biological side of it, you know, uh, my humanity part. I don't know much about my humanity, genealogy and ancestral. I don't. If I had and still do have this conversation with God because of my transformation, um, who am I? What am I? What, where, what is my ancestry native earthly roots? What, what do I connect to the most here in the earth? And I get a Native American vibe. I feel, I would say I'm Native American. I wouldn't say uh, 100% blood, but I wouldn't know that. But I, I feel dominant calling, leading, uh, something I connect more in the Native American uh, when, I, when I do my spiritual practices uh, and my praying time, my, my, my personal time, um, I, I, when I listen to myself pray to God sometimes, it don't sound like South Georgia, mm -hmm. uh, redneck, slow, drawn out, twang that everybody loves. Um, it sounds like another tribe, another tongue. <laughs> So um, I'm, I tend to connect more native, and we're natives, anyways. We're very feel like we're what, what's the word indigenous. Indigenous. Yeah, uh, we feel like we're just a new species in Christ. Um, before Jesus Christ, you would never see bamboo. And, <laughs> you, you know, you would never get the vibe you get here. Would, yeah, you're you're definitely connected to the earth, man, and connected by the. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Back to the essence and uh, spirituality and animals. And I, I picked that. I mean, that's obvious, you know. I, um, but I don't put preference over that. Um, that's just, again, my earthly heritage. Um, mm -hmm. I preface my spiritual heritage. And I just believe that because of my spirituality, the Native American spirituality aspect of their yeah. life um, resonates with my particular journey. Yeah. More and more. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's why the scripture tells us uh, that the flesh profiteth nothing and that we're not supposed to be caught up in genealogies and endless questions and trying to trace it back and, and, and thinking that somebody's more closer to God because of, you know, who they are or who their father was. Like, God is not a respecter of persons. And so uh, a true Jew is one inwardly, as the scripture tells us. And so that's the beautiful thing about it, man, how we're... um. You know, God yeah, is willing to deal with anyone as long as they'll repent, you know? Yeah, I would say like Cherokee. If I had to like throw a dark at it, just Cherokee. <laughs> well, I, I, we didn't even talk about this, and I know we're, we're pressed for time, but uh, we I got to mess around with it. I mean, I was there was a lot going on this, this past uh, Thursday at our men's retreat, but something that I know Nico is big on, and, and you, you are too, some of the different supernatural um, uh, define the laws of fi physics and uh, tapping into spiritual senses with uh, the mindfold. Um, mm. What is it? The blindfold that you can wear. And so we're like uh, wearing the blindfold and guessing colors, like holding up these bean bags that are different colors or flashcards or markers. I think I've seen you do. You got a video you, uh, that you guys did online where you you have your daughter wearing the blindfold and she's guessing every color and she's she got it with 100 percent accuracy maybe yeah, about six it. or seven colors or something uh talk a little yeah. bit about like this you know mo moving past the laws of physics and and the, the spiritual senses and you know we we messed with it a little bit this weekend and it, it was fun i wasn't that good at it but my mind was was all over the place really to to focus but i've seen videos where you guys have done it i think kirby uh, you know, promote some of this stuff and even the, the light bulb um, uh, um, experiment and stuff like that. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, real quickly, we just use it as a tool. Um, basically, if we see something done, um, we know we can do the same thing. Um, but my, our main concern is that we do it in Christ. So like me breaking a light bulb because I'm some witch or um, wizard or dark force or whatever, negative connotation, um, manipulating if we're doing something, you know, like at Moses in the first time. Yeah. Um, we want to we wanna be able to say that we, do, we can do that in Christ and it's possible because of that. We want to be able to demonstrate and teach why we're able to do that. 
And it's not some hokey pokey potion or whatever. It's actually faith that we as creators are able to create. And especially when you're talking about your own, see like that video, we teach our children these things. So that was like a, a glimpse behind the veil here. This is what we do in the spirit. So that they operate as a child, childlike because they are um, in, in spiritual things. And the mindfold is very just convenient. And it, it really speaks to the third eye pineal uh, group, um, which is very solid and true scientifically and everything and spiritually. Um, but it might speak to them to come up to a new level that, whoa, this, this is a Christian mystic. This is a believer in Jesus. And he's breaking tiles with light bulbs and doing this mindfold and whatever else, um, which to me, that's, foolishness is is kids stuff you know it's, <laughs> it's fun games right yeah but it's enjoyable is it but it keeps them childlike it keeps them in uh spiritual so um i find myself i don't know about you i get bored some days um in my spirituality and it's simply because maybe i i haven't been still uh, in a while and had a conversation you know, we kind of where I guess we're ending where we left off or uh, where we started. But there's some days are better than others. You know, walking in the spirit, there's times, you know, counter in the flesh. And uh, whatever that thorn in the flesh is at the moment, from an addiction to whatever it is, um, it can be removed. You're going to be the one to pull it out. Um, back in my old days, I was dipping tobacco. And I was, God, take it from me. Take it from me. I know it's bad. I believe for it to be bad. Therefore, it was going to be bad. And it's a nasty habit. I need to quit doing it. Um, I knew it was nasty before Jesus, but I, I really knew it was nasty and bad for him. I'm talking about I get a chaw of tobacco and a dip and even smoke a cigarette. I mean, no restraint no discipline whatsoever. So to be able to break those addictions, it's just an encounter with God. So being still and having that conversation with him, he's able to speak in that conversation and, and really, so yeah, definitely um, all on the spiritual aspect of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And for people who don't know the light bulb, experiment that we're talking about it's basically just taking a piece of tile that you would tile a kitchen floor with or any other thing with uh, you know they're pretty hard things they're very thick and a light bulb and we're not talking about the big spiral kind just a traditional light bulb they're very very thin uh, on a molecular level if you break a light bulb or you drop a light bulb on sometimes even carpet it's going to bust uh, so the experiment is to have faith that the molecular structure of the light bulb will change to be stronger than the tile to when you drop the light bulb, uh, it will bust the tile and the light bulb will stay intact. Um, and we've done it times where we chunk it in, like throw it with force and it busts the tile and not the bulb. Um, and, and again, that's it's not, Fun games, fun games, fun games. It's, it's fun to play Jesus. that. Yeah, I enjoy playing it. It's a fun <laughs> game for me. So, yeah. you know, if it's fun for me, if dad's having fun, guess what? Everybody <laughs> has fun. And, Everybody's, yeah. and sometimes some people need to see sometimes. something to believe. Yeah. And if it will impact some person to say, hey, what did you just do? And it opened up a door to talk. Yeah. They're all going to be And haters. a good door, by the way. Right. Yeah. I mean, it opens up an opportunity for them to have a conversation. Yeah. It, it restores so childlike faith for, you know what I'm saying, for the old people too. Yeah. 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 So. To believe that more is possible. I mean, that's the thing. You know, we, I, I, I like going out under the night sky or, or even the day sky and, and asking for the Father to show me um, uh, chariots of fire or uh, angels under the night sky. And I've, I've, I had so many experiences and even this it's been a while but this past men's retreat um that we went out we had beautiful amazing encounters and it was awesome because it had been so long but those i talk about how like visitation sparks revival like there's something that happens 
within me when I'm able to experience something otherworldly with every like it's something as big and grandiose as going out and praying for a sighting and having those encounters. They're amazing. Um, or it's something as small as just getting with alone with the Lord, turning on some worship music and feeling his presence wash over my body and my spirit. You know what I'm saying? And change stuff and fix stuff and release things. And like the beauty of this spiritual walk and this connection that we have with the father, they we're left changed, man. It opens up things within us to receive and keeping that childlike faith and wonder. That's something that we have to kind of fight for as we grow up in, in, in age as we're able to look at a lot of old people, they get set in their ways. You can't teach them nothing. They, they're, Hey, it's, this is the way it's always been. And it's all can't teach an old dog, new tricks. And so that's something that I've had had to even like, hold on. Why is this? Why am I set in my way in a cognitive dissonance, even though you've shown you've been shown other evidence and other teachings or whatever, but you won't believe it because you're just set in your ways. It's easier. You've maybe even taught people that this was the way or whatever the case is. And so I think that's something that uh, spending time in the presence of God through any type of spiritual work, walking in the spirit involves all of this stuff, I believe. And uh, I think it's so important and big part of my life as well. Yeah, so it's interesting there because as a holistic, and when I say as a holistic health coach, you can take that out and substitute it as pastor. This is how we pastor people. Ultimately, yeah. we're pastoring people, and in a secular term, uh, or in a non-religious way, or in a safe way, yeah. we health and life coach. It, yeah. The two are interchangeable, and we practice the spirit above the natural. Um, but we exploring doing life together holistically spirit soul and body so being able to talk about your physical body um, diet health nutrition whether we talk about your soulless realm thoughts emotions and feelings imaginations the whole thought process the consciousness you know soulless realm can uh, be very enlightening for some folks and then of course lining those two up if you're healthy in your physical body and if you're healthy in your soul you're gonna have a. You're gonna be in a prime position to be healthy spiritually, because your foot ain't hurt, or or you don't have this thing hurt you, or you you don't have your mind on this, you don't have your mind on that. Um, it's all the more abundant alignment, the more abundant alignment of heaven to earth in your personal life is what Christ produced for us. So whenever I start getting my my spirit man, my my soulish man and my physical man when they started getting lined up and i really started experiencing the abundant life in jesus christ so that's what we strive to do um we we tend to do more living room uh one-on-one -on -one, real zoom type blunt transparent type uh engagement rather than a pulpit or a church office with a desk but come whatever may. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to make it comfortable, man. Yeah, so you know, so. Um, if you're Buddhist, then we, we're able to facilitate that. If you're Hindu, we can facilitate that. We can facilitate any belief or non-belief, any yeah. culture or tradition, uh, just because of our willingness to not get offended and just to be real. Goes a long way, especially in coming from religion, man, which we're in the Bible Belt. We're, we're inundated with it. You know, people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. So that goes a long way, man, just being practical, being open, walking in love, a love that transcends dogma, a love that transcends hurt, wrong, that transcends your right to be right, crucifies that even. Like, it's so beautiful. And I thank you guys for, for hanging out with me. I thank you guys for being uh, present and a part of my life. And you guys really, you know, you know what I'm saying, mean a lot to me. And uh, and Kindred Spirits is, is more, it does more than people know. You know what I'm saying? And us even having this conversation of being vulnerable and open so other people can resonate with us as well and see us have these conversations is, is so powerful. That's why I continue to do it. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys for hanging out with me, being, being in my life, supporting my ministry, just, man, honoring me. It, it means the world. And I want to make sure that I'm doing the same for you guys. And um so for people who want to follow your work, you guys are on Facebook under Jeff and Jamie Moody. Um, you also have Jeff and Jamie Moody dot com. That's really under construction. But everything that we've talked about, the art, 
the ministry, the holistic health coaching. If people want to uh, email you guys and get in your inbox and find out more about what you guys do, they can go to those websites. And uh, anything else, man, that you guys want to leave the people with? Final thought? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, man. Yeah. Enjoy doing life with you. We hey, appreciate it. I honor you, uh, and, and I honor the whole body of Christ, regardless of what religion or system or wherever you are. I acknowledge all of you. So, uh, yeah, man, blessings. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Je Jeff came to the um, uh, men's retreat this past Thursday too. So it was a, a blessing for him to be able to meet him and uh, hang out with him there. And uh, also, Nico came. Nico was in the chat earlier. <laughs> Shout out to yeah, Nico. I hate to yeah. I hate to cutting it short, but I did want to, you know, facilitate uh, fellowship a good day with you. And it was very, very enjoyable. Very, it was great. It we was definitely fun. seven hours I drove to. <laughs> yeah, 14 hours, right? <laughs> Round trip. Yeah, yeah which so. was that in the spirit, right? So, Heck yeah. um, it like, so two weeks ago, if you had to put a linear time frame on it. So and it was it's just the beginning, for sure, 100%. But thank you love, again, Derek. Thank love you guys. So Thanks for hanging out. Good Many course. blessings. I'll talk with you guys soon. Blessings. All right. Shalom, shalom. Peace. Jeff and Jamie Moody, ladies and gentlemen. Again, go to their website, jeffandjamiemoody.com. It's under construction, but if you want to book a consultation, book a private session with them, all of the stuff is available there. I'm actually helping them with the website. So we're, we're undertaking that as of now. So, man, thank you guys for hanging out. Everybody in, in chat, so many beautiful souls hanging out with us here. Shirley, uh, Bur Burkana, I'm not sure. I'm probably butchered the name. Burkana Hall, thank, thank you for joining. Testimony over there on D Live hanging out in, in the chat. Teal Empress, uh, Richie Breath, shout out to you, brother. Love your live streams, bro, and everything that you're doing. Be encouraged. Keep it up, man. Love what you're bringing to the table as well, bro. You are very good at articulating uh, some of these deep truths in a practical way to people. And uh, thanks for, for you showing up being yourself. Shout out to Alan Kistler, uh, Phoenix Rose. Let's see who we, Christy Johnson was here. Thank you for the donations as well, my friend. Um, yeah, shout out to everybody. There was a bunch of people here from the beginning, but we've gone two hours and I can't see this chat anymore that far up. So, man, I hope this encouraged you. I think that, uh, again, just seeing how we're supposed to operate, man, how we're supposed to walk in love, how we're supposed to communicate and um, the, the key there of not getting offended. You're going to hear stuff that's going to offend you There's because there's, there, on, on this walk, this faith walk, there's there's people that you kind of link in with and and you feel open and vulnerable with until you're open and you share something that kind of catches them off guard or it scares them your, your freedom your, your your liberty it ends up becoming a, a threat to them you know you find out there's people like that and so they stop walking with you you know and there's people who come in and out of your life and what that's understandable but but identifying that of like there's people who are in it for the long haul like i really do feel like there's those people there and um and we have to say that because dealing with religion and spirituality, and I remember we were talking about this yesterday, it's like, man, you'll have people that, I, I've had people in my life that I've, um, we would talk to every day. We studied the scriptures together every day. We pray every day. Even if it was just that, that morning thing, just touching base. Hey, man, just checking on you, praying for you. Man, this is what God's doing. And every day there was this connection. And this was somebody new. And then they have something go on in their life where they have a change of heart. They learn something new doctrinally. Or maybe they just even quit living for the Lord. Maybe they start get they get back on drugs and alcohol and start doing meth again or something. I don't know. Get back on pills. and And then you never hear from them again. They don't want nothing. They don't because you represent, you know, doing right, living for the Lord. And so they're just gone. You'll never hear from them again. Or they find out that you that you do kundalini yoga. You never hear from them again because it's some, there's a disconnect there. And so we know that that's a thing. I've experienced it so much and I've been in this thing for a long time that I know that I have to fight against it. And we can feel it rising up in our own selves. Right. Again, when we're conscious of it. Hold on. Why am I? upset that he doesn't believe the way that I believe? Why am I upset? Because they, you know, choose to love their enemies versus whatever. Being consciously aware of that uh, 
helps us to move forward and to preserve friendships. Um, and, and, and the scripture says love keeps no records of wrongs. Like we're able to let love transcend our differences and really more than ever for me, my spirituality, to be able to see Christ in that, to be able to see love in that, that even though we disagree, I don't care. Again, even having to point those things out, you guys know I've talked about this in the past of like when you mention somebody's name in a Christian thing and a spiritual thing was like, we'll say, yeah, man, I like truth seeker. I don't all, I don't agree with everything. And even having to, um, you know, introduce a conversation when you bring up their name. I don't agree with everything, but I, I love him and I believe he's saved. You know, we hear these weird, these weird, weird um, prefaces about friendship or now don't don't think that I believe in Kundalini. I believe in his walk with the Lord and what he's doing, but he's off on a lot of things. For some there's this weird dialect in Christendom where we have to preface somebody. Man, I like Nico. I don't agree with everything he believes in. Like, why did you have to preface saying this guy's name and then say I don't believe in everything? And it's a to be conscious and aware of that. Like why do why do I not want to be identified with his mushroom use? You know, I don't believe in everything that he agrees with, but I love him and he's a brother or, you know, so being conscious of that, even though we disagree, we have disagreements. Look, it's nothing. I don't care. Let me find the scripture says that can two walk together lest they agree. And from the realms that I come from, we would find things in people's lives that we don't agree with and we don't agree on. And we would use that as as a term or a, as a reason to not walk together. Hey bro, see, we don't walk, we don't agree. So we can't walk together. And I b- found myself meeting Christians who would just like want to go through my whole philosophy and what everything I believe until they found something that they don't agree with. Hey, the Bible says we can't walk together because we don't agree. You believe in speaking in tongues. I don't believe in that, you know, or whatever it is. And so they would find that as grounds to not walk together. But now I look at that scripture in the newness of life for me now. It says, can two walk together lest they agree? Listen, let's find out what we agree on and let's walk together in that. And we'll find out that we have a lot more in common than than we have that separates us. And uh, and we're finding that not only with the Christian, not only with that somebody who knows the Bible, but people who just walk in love, man. And love is their religion and love transcends any doctrines or any dogmas. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, somebody wants to know if I can explain my stream and what what is it that I would like to do? And that's the foundation of it. That's uh, that's what I believe to walk together in love, to have the hard conversations to uh, and and, and to not belittle or to, to demonize anyone because they're different but to celebrate that difference and move past the, the the doctrines and the dogmas and the things that are obviously there that separate you and tell you to move away again whether you're christian or not whether you're christian whether you're buddhist there is a pursuit within the heart of of individuals that is after truth that is after justice inequality and love and we know that the scriptures testify that god is love and how will they know that we're his disciples well they'll know that we're his disciples because we all speak the same thing no they'll know that we're his disciples because we're all given to the truth we all will give up our lives for pursuit of truth no the scripture says that they will know that we are his disciples because of our love one for another that we walk in love, that we walk in peace, that we walk in patience, that we walk in virtue. All of these things are a byproduct of the fruit of love. Learn to love. Learn to walk together. And, and, and the way that you learn to do it is when you get offended to identify that. Why am I offended, man? Why am I getting upset? It still happens to the best of us, man. I still find people, they say stuff or they lash out at me or whatever it is. And I find myself getting offended. I'm like, hold on. Why am I offended? Why do I have to be right? Listen, I crucify my right to be right. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. Look, I'm trying to figure this stuff out with you. And I'm just being open and honest about my experiences. And I expect you to do the same. And there's a level because if you are, then there's things that I can learn from you. No matter how deep you are, no matter how um, uh, well versed you are in any spiritual or religious text, like there's things for me to learn from you just through life experience. 
And so we learn from one another by doing life together. And we're all apt to teach and apt to be taught. Richie says agape, agape love, which is an unconditional love. It's a love without restraints. It's a love. A lot of people say, I love you if, or I accept you if. That's the love of the father. It's like, look, I know that you're jacked up. I know that you got character flaws, character defects, and things that you're still dealing with, but I love you anyway. I love you anyway. And that's the love that we carry, man, once we're conscious of it and we walk in that. And, we, and it's transferable. It's contagious. And freely we receive, freely we give. And uh, that's what it's about. So shout out to everybody. Love you guys. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for checking out this podcast. And uh, and anybody who is, is new to my work, there's a lot of new people over the last couple of days listening to the podcast. Make sure you go browse the um, archives there. We've done we've interviewed so many amazing people throughout the years and uh, um, um intricate and you know so many gems man throughout the years it was a blessing i was able to kind of do a simulcast the other night with uh uh killer priest who is a a hip-hop artist who uh uh, rapped uh affiliated with the wu-tang clan and so his music has really inspired me so i had the ability to uh uh opportunity to interview him we did we kind of interviewed each other on each other's platform so check that interview out as well. I've had the privilege to talk to so many people. Busy Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. I would exhaust myself to go through the list of amazing people that I've been able to sit down and have a conversation with and pick their brain. And I don't think any of them is, is any better than the next because if you are listening, you uh, there's so many gems that were in this podcast that you're not going to get from the you know, kill a priest episode or the uh, busy bone episode that you will get when two like-minded individuals uh, sit down and just be open and honest with one another. So I hope, I hope that you receive that man. Hope that you guys are encouraged and uh, stay encouraged, man. Stir yourself up in the spirit. If you look, look into uh, to link in with us and like-minded people, uh, make sure you join our discord. You get access to that. It's in the descriptions here. Um, my Patreon, if you would like to partner with me as well, patreon.com backslash truth seeker. Also, my book is here. Make sure you get a copy of that as well. Spirit Realm, Angels, Demons, Spirits, and the Sovereignty of God, forward by Jordan Maxwell. Check it out. Thank you, guys. I love each and every one of you, and we'll do it again very soon. Peace, peace. Shalom. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.